Ah, uh, what a long day, huh, Izzy Weevil? See if there's anything good on our YouTube feed tonight. New content from Rolling Like Jimmy. That's always good. Let's see what he's got going on. You know, Izzy Beagle, we haven't played video games in a long time. We said we get the old console out and play a little bit, huh? I still think that's cheating. Well, hello, YouTubers. So obviously I'm not the guy to watch play video games, but my buddy over at Rolling Like Jimmy is pretty good at it. I highly recommend going over to check out his channel. I haven't noticed the last time I was watching him that he's got an empty spot on the wall behind where he sits to play. So today's project is going to be building a Tonto style fighting knife from an old rasp, so he's got something cool to hang on the wall. The first thing we're looking to do is fire up our forge, that way we can heat the steel and cool it slowly to anneal it. We're looking to soften the steel to make it a little easier to work with. Since I had this thing hot already, I took advantage of the situation and used the hammer to knock down some of the rough teeth on the coarse side of this rasp. That would be a little bit easier to sand when I got that far. Okay, we've got the rasp nice and hot. I'm just going to turn the forge off and let this thing sit there for a couple hours to cool. Our rasp is cooled and we're ready to start the process of making our knife. The first thing we're going to do is take this over to a drill press and drill four holes into the end that's going to be the handle. And it's pretty important to note that we're not just drilling random sized holes in the handle here. Uh, these need to be the same size as the metal that you're going to use for the pins that will hold the handles on. Okay, now that we've got the holes drilled in the handle of the knife, uh, we're ready to mark out the shape of our knife with a paint pin or a black marker or something and cut it out. You can use a uh, die grinder and cutting wheel if that's what you have. Personally, I like to use the plasma cutter. We've got our knife blank cut to the shape that we want. Now we just need to get out a grinder and kind of take the rough edges off of it. We need to take a second here and cut a point on the tip of our blade. Uh, I use the chop saw and just kind of cut it at a 45 degree angle. At this point in the project, we're ready to start shaping the knife uh, using a sander. This is a fairly labor intensive portion of the project. So make sure you are ready for it and you want to make sure that you have proper uh, safety equipment as well. A respirator is a very good idea for this part of things. I wanted the bevel of my knife to be set at a 12 degree angle. Uh, so I went ahead and built myself a cheater block to help me set up my sander to make sure that my angles would be correct for this. Because of the way I was able to set my sander up, uh, I was able to just screw my knife blank to a 2x4. This made sanding the knife at the correct angle very easy. I would highly recommend it. Alright, the idea here is to do the majority of your metal working before you harden the knife. So you wind up doing a lot of sanding on the front edge of the knife where the blade is going to be, a little bit on the back side of the blade, just, you know, to make it look nice. Uh, kind of trim up the handle and whatnot, do any of this stuff that you can before you harden and temper the steel. As you can see, the nice thing about using this block system is that when you're done sanding on the blade side of things, you can more or less just flip your blank over uh, and sand on the back side of the blade as well. Puts a nice bevel on it, looks pretty, all that happy stuff. And the rough sanding is done, now it's time to refire the forge, and we are going to uh, harden the steel for this knife now. Okay, so the idea here is to heat your knife blank until it is just about white hot. Uh, then you're going to quench it and use motor oil. You want to use the used motor oil uh, for two reasons. The first one is that it doesn't quench it quite as fast as water. If you use water, you can wind up with a brittle knife. The other thought is that the carbon in the used oil can infuse into the knife blade and help it be just a little more durable. After this process, your knife blank is going to look pretty gross, but that's okay because it's time to do the final shaping on the knife blank. So back to the sander we go. That looks much better. Now we're ready to start the tempering process. This part of the process is pretty simple. Uh, basically all you're going to do is preheat an oven to about 400 degrees and put your knife blank in it for a couple hours. I went with four hours for mine and it seemed to do the job pretty well. The idea behind the tempering is it puts a little bit of elasticity back in the knife. Now it's not quite so rigid.
Our time is up. It's time to get the knife out of the oven. Kind of neat. It comes out looking all golden brown. Okay, we're back out in the shop, and we are going to start prepping our knife blank to install a wooden handle. You want to clean up your knife blank with a buffing wheel or a sanding wheel of some sort uh, to get any kind of residual oil that's on there off. Uh, probably a good idea to get it with a little bit of brake clean or some other solvent to make sure that it is really nice and clean. Uh, also, use caution at this point. The knife should be fairly sharp. Okay, we're going to start working on installing the handle of the knife. The first step is to cut the pins that we're going to use to hold this in place. You want to sand down any rough edges that are on these pins uh, and make sure that they fit smoothly into the holes we drilled in the handle of the knife earlier. I've got a couple pieces of oak that I'm going to use for the handle on this knife. What I'm doing here is drilling a set of pilot holes into the wooden handles. These are going to act kind of as a starting point that we're going to build the rest of the handle around. So the next step here is to take one of the pins that we cut earlier and get it set into the knife blank. Then we can put the wooden pieces that we drilled the holes in onto the knife blank and this is going to give us the reference point for the second hole that we're going to drill into the wooden handles. It looks pretty easy to just drill straight through one of the pre-existing holes in the knife blank. And then we're just going to drive a second pin through the knife blank into the wooden handle. This is going to hold everything in place. With that complete, we're able to drill the rest of the holes in the pieces of wood just by drilling straight through the knife blank. Uh, this way everything lines up really nice. All right, now that we've got that wooden handle situated to where it can't really move around, we can trace the shape of the knife blank onto the wooden handle pieces. That way, you know, we know where to cut our pieces of wood so they'll fit nicely onto our knife handle. Let me just cut off the excess wood with a uh, small saw or something. Now, the way that I designed this knife, the handle of the knife actually needs to sit down into the oak a little bit. So I wound up using a router to take the excess wood out of the piece of wood that we're going to use for the handles. Uh, that way everything can sit down in there flush. You can see that the tang of the uh, rasp kind of sticks out on the back end of everything. And this is just something I chose to do for my design. You can do however you would like to do. Do what makes you happy. We're ready to attach the handles to the knife now. It's pretty simple. You're basically just going to mix up an epoxy, whatever you choose. I use this clear Gorilla Glue epoxy. It works really well. Um, it has a little flexibility to it, which is nice for a knife. You wind up installing all of your pins, putting the pieces of wood onto the sides of the knife, and then just squeezing this thing in a vise. And you want to watch for the epoxy to kind of ooze out of there. You're going to wind up sanding the excess epoxy off of it, so it doesn't really matter if it makes a little bit of a mess. Everything looks good, so we're just going to walk away for a couple hours and let everything set up. All right, our epoxy is set up and everything's looking pretty good. Really, it's pretty simple from here. You're just gonna use a sander to shape the handle. Uh, using a belt sander with like a, a flat plane on it, you can sand the pins down to be flush with the rest of the wood and everything turns out really nice and smooth this way. Uh, you wanna hit it with something you know, pretty fine in the end to make sure the wood is nice and smooth. And then I went ahead and stained this oak a darker color. I wanted it to look kind of like a walnut. So I put a little stain on it and that way the wood is sealed and everything looks really nice. At this point, the knife is pretty much done. Um, all you really have left is you can polish it with some fine sandpaper if you really want to, all the way up to a mirror finish if that's that's what you want. Um, and then after that, you just sharpen it and it's pretty much good to go. Of course, any large knife needs a scabbard to house it. I went ahead and built one out of PVC. It's a pretty simple process of cutting the PVC to the length and kind of a shape that you like, then heating it to allow it to be pliable so that you can form it. When the PVC cools, it'll retain the shape that you've pressed it into. Uh, as you can see, I just use a board to push the PVC down and then put the knife into the PVC, and that way it kind of takes the shape of the knife. Um, you use a sander to knock down rough stuff and shape things as you go along. When you get so far as to the end of the scabbard, you want to go ahead and try to seal it up. And once again, you just heat it and push with the board and this is going to seal the end of it. You can trim the excess off with a little saw and then sand everything down smooth so that it looks nice. I really wanted this to be able to go on a belt, so I built a belt loop on the top of my scabbard. All I really did was leave a small piece of PVC on the top of the scabbard, cut it partially in half, and then heated it and wrapped it around on itself. I used a little bit of epoxy to just kind of attach this to the front of the scabbard. Once the epoxy was dry, I just sanded this thing by hand to take any uh, dirt and whatnot off of it and make it look nice. If you're so inclined, you can paint your scabbard with a little bit of plastic paint, spice it up a little bit, make it different colors. I just left mine gray. It was plenty sufficient for me. I like the way that it looked. And ta-da, we are done. Looks nice, it is sharp, and we are ready to go out and do dumb stuff with it. 
Note, this is not a toy. Don't kill people. Don't hurt yourself. Of course, we started off in the kitchen, you know, cutting a tomato because that's what they do in all the ads and stuff. Uh, but that was pretty boring. So it's time to go outside and play some freaking Fruit Ninja or something. Yeah, slice and dice time. And of course, this is all made for some great slow motion footage. I love the slow motion. If you guys like it as much as I do, please, you know, leave a comment or a like and let me know that you think it's cool too. This was a very rewarding build. The knife turned out very nice, very aesthetically pleasing. It was not a technically hard build, but it was definitely time consuming. If you enjoy the things that I build, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, and I'll put a link to that in the video description. I definitely want to remind everybody to take a second to check out Roland Like Jimmy. Uh, he is pretty entertaining. I enjoy watching him play games. He also had a video the other day where he was making Hamburger Helper, and it was funny. It was hilarious. The Hamburger Helper, maybe not so tasty, but the video was worth watching. I am going to be giving him this knife, and he is going to be uh, doing an unboxing on his channel. So it should be pretty entertaining to watch him open this as he has no idea what it is or what I've made. Just a complete and total surprise on his part. So make sure you check out his channel. Once again, it's Rolling Like Jimmy. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions about this build, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please take the time to hit the subscribe button. I'm John Can, and remember, if I can build it, so can you.